Hello everyone, this video is going to cover the male reproductive system and how it works. So the male reproductive system begins at the level of the testes. This is the male gonad and site of spermatogenesis or the production of sperm. Within the testes are what are known as seminiferous tubules. These are the site of sperm production. Surrounding these tubules are Leydig cells that produce testosterone, which if you're a male, you are aware that it's important in puberty. And there are also Sertoli cells that are nourishing the spermatozoa. Now, before we get far into the male reproductive system, we should begin with the dissension of the testes. This occurs in utero. And so the testis or the testes, they begin up in the abdominal cavity and there is a tissue known as the gubernaculum that runs from the scrotal sac and attaches to the testes and pulls them through a hole in the abdominal wall. And this hole is called the inguinal canal. And so it is this gubernaculum that descends the testes into the scrotal sac. So now that the testes are in the scrotal sac, and let's say a male has hit puberty, spermatogenesis is then going to occur. This is the production of sperm. And once again, sperm are produced in those seminiferous tubules of the testes. And so if you've seen my female reproductive video, you may know that one germ cell results in one egg. Now in males, one germ cell results in four sperm cells, all of which are haploid, so they contain only one set of chromosomes. So now that the sperm have been produced and nourished in the seminiferous tubules, they are going to pass through the red testis and into the afferent ductules. And these afferent ductules are going to carry the sperm to the epididymis to be stored until maturation. So once the sperm have matured and are ready to be ejaculated from the body, they pass from the epididymis through the vas deferens and to the urethra. While en route to the urethra or the ejaculatory duct, the sperm pass by what are known as seminal vesicles. These are glands that in essence sit upon the vas deferens. The seminal vesicles are important because they produce components of semen. They produce almost 60% of what is contained in semen. And that's sugars, in essence fructose. They produce proteins, the citric acid, the phosphorus, the potassium, and lipids known as prostaglandins. The sperm also pass by the prostate gland that produces prostatic fluid, which is about 30% of the volume of semen. This fluid is very important because it is alkaline, which means it neutralizes the acidity of the vagina. Also contributing to semen is the bulbourethral gland, also known as the Cowper's gland. This is located at the base of the penis and it secretes a lubricant that is rich in mucoproteins and contributes about 10% of the volume of semen. So now that the sperm have passed through the deferens and are contained in semen, they are now reaching the urethra or the ejaculatory duct, which you guys know probably by now is highly associated with the male excretory system. So the excretory system also uses the urethra. And so the urethra is in the center of the penis. This is where the sperm or any excretory wastes are going to be expelled from the body. So let's say the sperm have been expelled and have entered the female's vagina. It takes approximately three days for the sperm to reach the fallopian tube and the ovum. And once fertilization takes place within the fallopian tube, it's called conception. And it's just the fusion of the male and female gametes to form a zygote. So, Getting into fertilization, you need to understand the structure of a sperm cell. 
So you have a flagella, which allows the sperm to move. You also have a head, and located on that head is an acrosome with an acrosomal cap. So the first step of fertilization is capacitation, and it's eroding the acrosomal cap, which is made of glycoproteins. So it's eroding the glycoprotein layer of the acrosome. And this has to occur for sperm to be capable of fertilizing the ovum. The second step of fertilization is the acrosome reaction. So now that the glycoprotein layer of the acrosomal cap has been removed, the sperm cell membrane is going to fuse with the outer membrane of the acrosome. And this results in the release of an enzyme known as acrosin. And that enzyme interacts with the zona pellucida of the ovum's outer membrane. This reaction also results in the hyperactive motility of flagella. And so these steps have to occur for the sperm to be capable of penetrating the egg's outer layer. The final step in fertilization is the cortical reaction. Its main function is to block polyspermy. So in essence, you only want one sperm to fertilize one egg. And so this cortical reaction is going to achieve that by blocking any other sperm from, from penetrating the egg's outer membrane. So once a sperm has penetrated the zona pellucida, those granules are going to fuse with the egg's plasma membrane via exocytosis. And this results in the hardening of the plasma membrane. And so that's how fertilization is achieved.